Is it better now? Okay. We're opposing the nostalgic belief that democracy survival demands the recovery of a once unified public sphere. The author contends that conflicts far from undermining public space is a prerequisite for its existence and growth. And I would like to start maybe to talk about this, this growth. Because public space is, as you know, a constant flow of individualities that solicit the voicing and sharing of words set within a complex legislative matrix, a highly regulated space of unending negotiation which we have naturalized under duress. And what would really interest me and would like to start with is that uh, even in their most dynamic exertions, the meaning of artistic interventions in public space is profoundly temporal. And I'm thinking about uh, what your truth mentioned, for instance, um, when saying what is left, for instance, on how a public can encounter really an artwork has to do with the time of the conflict. It has to do with the time of the, this encounter with the, with, the, with the work. I'm also thinking about what does it mean to put Turkish jokes in Oslo one year or to put in one decade afterwards. I mean that, for instance, I was not allowed in 2005 to translate all the labels from the fine art museums in Dijon. There was a Dora Garcia's exhibition proposal because the major didn't want to touch upon the issue of uh, Turkey entering in the European community. So the conflict has really uh, to do with time. Um, and I was wondering if we could start with a first uh, double question. Uh, how this uh, public space understood as a flu, uh, as a constant flu. Uh, but then, yeah. then, then I want to be, have to have a term more in the discussion then because you have the monument and you have the time. Yeah? Yeah. But you also have the thing which is called a memorial. Yeah? Yes. Where you some state went for war and then they have a memorial of that, you know. Huh? And a piece like this, what you mentioned, this Turkish jokes, is actually today it's a, there's a similar piece in, in, uh, uh, in Leiden, in, in the Netherlands, which is a permanent piece. Huh? So that becomes a memorial of the conflict between, uh, of, of the conflict or the, I mean, uh, th around Turkish immigration in Western Europe forever. Huh? So, uh, but this is a really interesting question, yeah, yeah, because uh, we're talking about the leftover again, that uh, how an artist can deal with the time of the work, or yeah, the time yeah, yeah. of uh, uh, the, 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 the reading of, uh, of that work. Yeah. Meaning that, how, for instance, Jans, could you deal with that, that the, the bricks uh, piece wouldn't mean the same, uh, maybe in 20 years? Uh, no, no, so no. So that could become a memorial? That yeah. could become, so... Yeah, but also like if it's like like inside the museum, it's also important that the that the uh, that the public space is getting traces, which is telling a certain history. You know, I mean, I mean, just like and 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 so many activities like the Eiffel Tower was also meant to be just contemporary, eh? so uh, and it has a huge meaning that be, it became permanent. You know, and representing a certain how do you say period of architecture and a certain period of of imperialism, the idea of the world exhibition and everything. You know, so. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. no. For me, this is a really interesting question because, of course, we all know that we are not in this protected space, which is the exhibition room. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you are working in, in public space, of course, the the, 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 the encounter with the conflicts is changing because what is around the yeah, huh? proposal is changing all the time. Yeah, so huh? How do you deal? Of have you had, for instance, or that could be the question? Uh, have you been? Uh, confronted to the to the limit of not going for a work or not doing a work because the the the, the context has uh, profoundly changed. Do you understand mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Uh, have yeah. you, all of you, uh, for instance, have decided uh, once uh, or not that because the context is changing? I'm thinking about you have started by putting what is in the news today. But I guess that is ethical lim limits that you are giving to your work sometimes that has to do with that, uh, that the context is 
profoundly changing and you cannot intervene. Uh, so, yes, if you could uh, give me maybe some examples. Or I have, yeah. the, the, for my practice, the, 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 the okay. most significant is, is uh, the Western world's relation to Arab-speaking cultures and religions, you know, right? yeah. because I have been working with Arabic language in the West, you know, in the US and in Europe, you know, long before September 11th. Huh? And I must say that, that that was a really a huge shift there, you know, huh? that yeah. suddenly, you know, uh, I mean, like it's, uh, um, when I did the first pieces, which is almost 20 years ago, it was more like, so, oh yeah, there's also Arab speaking people here, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. and suddenly it just uh, became such, I mean, the meaning of the work totally shifted, huh? so, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, my, or, or like, you know, like this, this very, this work with a, with a, with a pinup girl is before, it's like, yeah, it's long before September 11th, you it's know, of, yeah. yeah, so like, it's just, uh, but it's, um, and then opposite, like inside the museum, of course, like, you know, like inside the museum, you always, you go down and see work and then you say, okay, it's made in 72 and so on, and here it, it's kind of, yeah, that can happen other things, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk about time, yes? And I think what your question, if I understood you correctly, it's also dealing with ethic, yes? What is proper, what is not proper, or what is effective, or what is not effective, or disaffective, and there is moment sometimes that I will say reality, yes, it's bigger than art. And you mentioned the 9-11, uh -huh. and I think it was uh, Boris Groys that uh, was, um, I think, uh, crown uh, Bin Laden as the best video artist, but it was before ISIS, yes? Uh -huh. It was before ISIS he wrote it that he crowned, you know, and talk about iconoclasm. But ISIS, you know, know how to deal with iconoclasm and completely turn the idea of, you know, the artist, the bandit, the, um, which is related to the avant-garde, yes, the role of the artist. Sorry, I'm doing kind of a, a loop of time. Um, we talk about public, we don't talk about crowd management. Crowd management, it's the name of how to, do, to deal with public spaces. This is the new term uh, that's used by police, by cities. Yes, it's crowd management. We talk about the public space, we talk about the public, about ourselves, but we don't really configure and we talk about democracy. I don't know what we're talking about. Now, I would like to take a step back uh, to the time that I left Israel. Um, between 2000, um, six to 2010, I work with the, the um, um, PECA, which was the, before the academy in Ramallah, the International Academy in Ramallah. I work um, in another institute in, uh, in Berlin with the university and the Israeli Center for Digital Art. It was the first time that a public institute, I think Israel and Palestine, especially in the art, worked together. It was the first, I think, and the last time. Um, it was a moment that we could work together. It was a moment that we could try to do something or to create a project that's changed during the time. The project was supposed to be in Ramallah, it's supposed to be in Cholon, supposed to be in Gaza, supposed to be in, in Germany. Um, Gaza was invaded. We couldn't continue and work in Gaza. Uh, the situation changed over the time with the attack on Lebanon, so we couldn't con continue the project. The project continued. And today, if I will ask if I will do this project again, because many people come to Israel or to Palestine, and let's bring the peace, let's bring something, let's collaborate, yes? And the answer will be, I think, for my side, and I think for my colleague in Palestine, no. No, it's not a time to do a project together. Art, it's not the tool that we can use now to talk even about the situation. It's not to bridge beyond. It's even to reflect. So I think this is very, a very good question about where or if and how we limit ourselves or the possibility, you know, our change of reality, maybe sometimes, not always. I was talking about time and also um, the the production of, um, of permanent works. 
in public space uh, when everything around is also changing. So you can intervene or not in public space, but also uh, I was curious to know if uh, you have been reconsider, reconsidering uh, the existence of an artwork because what is around has profoundly changed. If that happened to you, I was just curious also to know if, uh, uh, because that which puts somehow also this idea of responsibility on the table for an artist or for a creator when you uh, do something in public space and do, you realize that the meaning of this something it is not making the same sense at all uh, and the conflict is another one. Uh, so. Uh, I, I want, if I talk, I prefer to limit myself to urban place yeah. and not a public space. It will be much more easy for me to articulate yeah. around the urban than the public. This is interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt you because I was thinking also about that. What could be your definition of public space? Because we are talking, we talk Colonia or we don't talk another city because for you that must be, yeah, this, there is not a generic definition of public space, maybe. Um, mm. You know, what, what is the public? I, I will say the, the easy way to get out of this question is to say it's ab abstraction of community. The easy way to go out of this question, it's a big question, what is the public? But the, the easy way to get out of it is will be this one. And then we'll be asked about the pub, public space, yes. Um, I think we have different relation to what is public in different societies, um, which is very much related to the urban uh, environment. We don't talk about the public space when we, uh, or think about the village, a rural place, yes? We don't think about the public space there. Why? We think about the city, and the city is a place of um, a saying, I will say, yes? The first, okay, I'm not going back to history. Yeah, I would even be even more sharp and say that public space is an invention from in Europe, in Western Europe somewhere mid 18th century, late, late 18th century, early 19th century. Before that, you didn't have public space. So it's a very peculiar um, uh, the, way of thinking when you talk <coughs> about public space. Yeah, some people, so um, when we started the discussion today, it was uh, the word agora came, mm -hmm. yes, which is going back yes. to what we want to project on the public space exactly. today. Exactly. Yes, so we do this yeah. inversion between public space, and I agree yeah. with you. The invention of public space is the invention also of control. Yes, yes it's, it's one go with the other. And we talk, when we talk about Agora, we're trying to go beyond this place and to look for something which is common. We talk about the common. But if we talk about the common, then everybody can have a access to the common. And this is we don't have in any city. This is what we don't have in any public space. Uh, but I want to answer your question, then I will shut up. Um, you ask about the permanent, and then you talk about the Eiffel, and I thought, wow, what will, it will be a permanent today? And then you mentioned the 9-11, so you can maybe understand my sequence of thinking, and when we talk about the permanent, or if I will go back to Jerusalem, I can talk about the Willing Wall, the Western Wall, yes? Which is permanent for 2,000 years. What it's created, maybe it's better not to to have the willing wall, yes? If we see what's going around, the permanent thing that we try and people pray and keep it for so long. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue, I think, there also in asking you. I was thinking that I should shoot in one of the questions from the, from the audience first, perhaps, so we, if we have this uh, feature here. It says uh, public interventions versus public commissions. What is the starting point of engaging in public space and whose interests are fulfilled? Anyone? Because we, you talked about working at the Art Council. So is, are all these works commissions or? Yeah, they, they yeah. work with commissions mm. or state commissions. Mm. Uh, um, What is the question? <laughs> so who's, I think the, uh, the, uh, when you engage in public space, whose interests are fulfilled in terms of that? Where, no. Where yeah, does the commission come? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, uh, 
Yeah, but I mean... <laughs> it's another right. minute, man. That's, huh? it, no, that's one minute again. Okay, yeah. No, you, please say something yes. to that. You know, just, 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 like, <laughs> I just had to say that. Yeah, so... Do you have an answer, Lars, to this? You want to, to that? React? No, I mean, I think that I, I, I wouldn't... I think that uh, art in public, is uh, its importance is overstated anyways. It's... I mean, just because the public potentially encompasses all everything doesn't mean that the art that is placed there also embodies that. I mean, you have to create that anyways, um, whether it's there or not. So, I don't know. I just said what I want to say. I don't know if I had anything to do with what you were talking about. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm thinking in the... Like we could, if we think of it as in time, I would say that starting with you, like this, uh, the public space also coincides with uh, kind of dis uh, society of discipline in different ways, and and this is something we we know through uh, Foucault, Foucault, of course, uh, and how this now translates it in his late lectures. He speaks about the society of security. I think this is also interpreted by Deleuze yeah. as the society of control. You talked about crowd management and mm. so on. But, uh, and I, I think that a lot of, uh, I mean, historically art uh, was very much a, a rebellion towards that kind of standardized modern space. Yeah, yeah way, it depends say. on how, what, how long is the historically yes. you're talking about. Yeah. No, but I'm thinking of uh, uh, in, the, in the history of public space then, if that's yeah, something if, that if emerges say, in the if late If you say that, well, the century. public space yeah. is something which is emerging yeah, yes. because yes. Uh, before that uh, it was... Uh, not public, it was owned by somebody. Mm. It, was, it belonged to the duke or the king or whatever it could be. But from the French Revolution onwards, you would have an idea that this is public. Yeah. This mm. is a public space. And, mm. and the young Kant, I shouldn't talk about him too much, but <laughs> the young Kant is actually super excited over these new possibilities mm. that you actually are able to have a, a community. I mean, he's the first one who is addressing the idea of a community which is not, uh, um, uh, what could it be, a, a position or all judges or all lawyers or all uh, kings or whatever it would be, but a community of free citizens. And the, the whole idea of public space, art, in the way we understand it, the integrity of the artist, nobody talked about the integrity of the artist before, 1760s, 70s, something like that. And uh, the uh, common sense, the, the collective judgment of something. All this is connected. And with control, of course, because then you would have other ways of controlling. And, and you would have uh, uh, the discipline, what Foucault is talking about, is the discipline of the body. And how that is supposed to be. That goes together with the crowd of management that you were talking about. And if I might add one more thing, it is that what my point is that there is a conflict, inherent conflict in what we are talking about if we um, agree upon that the artist is not necessarily a part of the community she or he is working for. Because then you would have these clashes. I don't think that they are... It's not, it's not something fun if a majority of people just hate and feel totally alienated to, to an artwork, then you are having this extremely elitist idea that, okay, they have to stand it. It's super good art. If nobody likes it or not, it doesn't matter. It's good art. The artist is always right. And maybe we should start to talk a little bit about that when we come into the, the question about public art, because I think it's much more complicated than one normally thinks. But this is what I mean in the, in the just to gonna continue, and then I'm gonna give it this in the, in a, in a modern, like if you think in the early, what do you say, in the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, uh, artistic uh, interventions into public space was also a provocation towards uh, the yes. modern society yes. towards, this, uh, towards the existing institutions and so on, institutional yeah. critique, we have all this. Yes. Uh, and there was also an inherent sort of uh, uh, critique of capitalism, you could say. Yes. But the way that society operates today, there, there is a much more, well, we saw it yesterday as well, uh, there is a kind of a breaking down between the, uh, maybe it was, uh, has always been broken down, but uh, the, the division between art and capitalism mm -hmm. is sort of fading away. And then we have a new conflict line I could see here over the mm -hmm. last two days, and that's between art and, and life. 
<laughs> uh, in a way, <laughs> everyday life. And we are constantly on this border, <laughs> and we are using uh, sometimes new, techno new techniques mm. and tools, and sometimes old strategies. Because mm. this idea of of um, uh, art as being emancipatory mm. and autonomous and about freedom and so on still exists, of course, yes. but it plays out in a very different way. So, yes. so this, what you are talking about, this moment maybe to reflect on and rethink. The relation yeah. between art and life. Yeah. And, and there, life is, and very, there very is a difference. Essential. I would like to quote my old friend Jimmy Durham. He mm. said, Life is not art. Mm. That's a mm. complete sharp border between art and life mm. because art is there for commenting possibly mm. on life mm. or living mm. everyday life, etc. Yeah. etc. Et uh, and then we go into these blurry, interesting zones. Mm. One of the most interesting, I think, of contemporary art when it comes to public space. And that is precisely what Apollonia and many other artists were doing. They are entering into a community mm -hmm. and living there and working there. In Apollonia's case, I think it was almost two years. Mm -hmm. And out comes something which has to do with mm -hmm. uh, identification yeah. and actually shaping a community mm -hmm. which was not existent. Yeah. Then you might also say, of course, that this is gold mm -hmm. for uh, uh, city planners yes. or um, whatever. Yeah. I mean, this is an easy, fantastic way of solving a tricky problem, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But and I, I agree on that. But I think it's interesting, super yeah. interesting. Yeah, definitely. Because it's changing totally the role of the artist. Mm. But that has changed also completely. You were talking before about the definition of public space. Yes. Uh, that has changed also a lot. For me, public space, it is not... Uh, I'm not using the urban term uh, because I think it includes also public domains that have been using a lot uh, in their project, for instance, the media mm. also, uh, mm. to make the project existent. Uh, so this is part of the, the public space. And then again, this, the, the physical construction has uh, changed also a lot, meaning that, I don't know here, but in Oslo, uh, most of the public space has been privatized. Mm. Yes. So uh, it is not public yes. and it's not common anymore. Uh, but also so the public domain television channel. Sorry? It's, it's, it's that the public here doesn't mean that it belongs to the public when you talk about the media. It's, yeah. Mm. It's yeah. not a public domain. It's mm. public hearing, maybe, yeah. or silence, but it's come from a private... Uh, mm. 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 So, no, just to but, point out a little mm. bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, this, I think, evolution of... Uh, what could yeah, be but maybe, maybe it could even be so, that, that, which is a strange thought, that we are going to be nostalgic about the idea of the public space. Uh -huh. Maybe it will disappear totally. Mm. We don't know that. But, but it's, uh, I don't know who you said, said this, uh, uh, life is not art or whatever, it's Jimmy. Jimmy Durham. Jim, Jim, yes. I want to go back to that point, you know, and say like, you know, like, no matter if you make huge provocation or like a, a really turning things upside down and making human zoo or whatever, huh? or if you make like, Apollonia makes this project, you know, like so, I think a very big value of this project is also how it works as on, on a symbolic level, mm -hmm. you know, she provides a structure, you know, mm -hmm. and it's fine that some people feel better about living in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. that's fine. Eh? But what I really want to emphasize is also that that structure also influence how we look at other structures. Yes, eh? So I mean, like, so I'm not so interested in that she solved that problem. That's mm. nice, and it's it, and it, I, I know her work quite mm. well. So it's very solid project. You know? mm. But I mean, I also like how this project or art piece or intervention in public space or public sphere uh, influence how we look and how we understand yes. each other. As as uh, so it means like so it's it's. Um, um, it's, I mean, like, I think it has much more value than, than what it has for the people involved in the That's, project. Yeah, right? I agree totally. Yeah. But, and I would also say that the, the wonderful thing with this is that there, it's an artist who is deeply, roughly researching and questioning yeah. these questions yeah. from the perspective of the artist. And I think this is the only, this far, yeah. uh, doctoral dissertation which has been made on this particular subject. And again, I would say, it's super interesting, and you should really read it, all of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can jump, like, for us, it wasn't just the media, like, uh, like what, the, the incident that we were dealing with was wiped out from the collective memory. So we had to, to plant it again, and to do that, we needed to collect also, uh, like, the, the, the 
this conscious, create a collective conscious, uh, and that's a really long process. And uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and of, uh, of course, it's a it's a, it's a very uh, it's a very uh, dynamic uh, process, and, and there is a dialectic in it because uh, because I think at the end we we manage to to break out from from the circularity uh, cir from the circles of the same questions brought up again whenever uh, the, the, the issue of, of, of racism, like when we were trying to trace the evolution of racism, uh, it, we discovered that from living in Norway that some incident will happen, people will come with the same arguments from both sides, and then we'll wait until it calms down, and then again another incident will happen, and, and then it will go on like that. So, so, so it, was, uh, it was this hunt for, for just a better question when it comes to, to this topic. And uh, yeah, and that's uh, I don't know if we managed to do that or not, but basically that. And I would add, just sorry, no, no, that we wouldn't find those questions in these kinds of settings because the consensus is too inflated. There, w those questions won't come about. This 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 uh, base of knowledge won't be found in these kinds of settings. We just all agree too much. True. May I ask you a question? Um, if I understood the project, you go, you walk on a very thin line. No, it could be interpreted in both ways. How how you keep your walking, or how do you know, or you don't keep to to keep the line, or to keep to draw the line, or where you draw the we line? We don't know so much with this artist. <laughs> no, oh, no okay. I, I don't know. Uh, you want to take this? No, I would say the same. Like, yeah. uh, uh, just uh, actually accepting not knowing proves to provide more information than knowing. That's a nice place to be. I was curious to know, uh, so little, but I was curious to know if you have continued in, uh, in searching for documentation uh, for the Congo village uh, after the, the work. I was really surprised of... Uh, the capacity of uh, working with that such a historical data um, at the disposal of the public. Uh, so yeah, I was really curious just to know if you continue. Uh, yeah, I mean, in it, archiving. It took us like actually. four years, uh, and and actually when we started, we were not uh, like when we did the press conference. It was just because we thought it's a very easy idea, so we had to claim it before any other artist. I'm like, okay, this is ours, and then. Uh, and now we're working on a book actually to document all this process because uh, yeah, because so many people provided us with so much valuable uh, information. So, Could I ask you like a really general question? Uh, we all know that probably your work has been one of the most polemic <laughs> works uh, that uh, arrived to Norway, but I was thinking for you... Uh, Jan, sir, um, if you could give me an example of the most polemic of conflictual uh, project uh, you have been working on uh, so far. We all have had uh, a project that has been particularly uh, conflictual, uh, I think. I mean, I, I did it, it's a great idea also. Yeah. So you do? Could you please? Uh... Yeah, well, I was two years in a Kunsthalle in outside of Oslo, and every show I was doing caused a scandal. So I know something about it. Mm. Okay. Everyone. Every. Everyone. Okay. <laughs> and you, Jens? <laughs> oh, I mean, you have been working with regulations, you have been working with uh, logistics matrix, so I thought that maybe for you that could have been, uh, in particular cases, quite um, tough. Uh, to come with uh, some of the projects in public space, mm. or not? Yeah, but I think it's... Uh, um, no, I, I cannot think of a specific, this was the most, prop, I don't know, like, so just like, so... Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's... Yeah, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I think it's a very difficult question because it's for one, you know, for one it will be a provocative, for other thing, for somebody else it will be consensus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a question also on your point of view. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I can think about projects that, you know, I was in custody because, and not because of Israel-Palestine, yes, because we were yeah, yeah. young no, and stupid, and we thought that we'd be doing art, and probably we did something else, but... Uh, mm-hmm. okay. I don't know. Yeah. But I can say about this, working with the provocation, then I will say, like, you know, it's... Uh, I agree that, of course, you need to you need to know where you're standing yourself before, to, before if you deal with these things, and this also makes you more and more aware where you're standing ethically and politically if you do these really how to say crazy provocative things, you know. Huh? But I like to think about the the provocation the things, the uh, the way Chichek is work, working with provocation, you know. Huh? Mm-hmm. And also, like you know, if you think like normally, it, it's 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 uh, there's always this very, I mean. Uh, how do you say, revolutionary or revolting moment of provocation, you know, we want things different or whatever, you know. And I also see a huge potential in the in, in providing it as some kind of psychotherapy for the society. I mean, like, you know, like with the Congo village, you see that one, you know, and it's a problematic case, you know, but again, it makes us look at other structures, you know. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot about my the, the, the civilization I live within, and I get new breaks to reflect on everything. You and me sitting here together, you know, like the society I live in, Scandinavia, the Western civilization, because of that project, you know. And, and of course, it's, I mean, like, so... It's, it's, I mean, and it's, I think it's important that, uh, I mean, like, for, for my, um, for, for my orientation or for my, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, understanding of the civilization I, I live within, this, this one, you know, the community, and it's exactly as important, you know, like so. And it's, I mean, like, and they are also like, it, it, they are not providing an alternative, they are just repeating history, just like, so, uh, so they don't, yeah. Um, and and it, it means like you know and why why shouldn't why shouldn't it think that you categorize people into continents why should that happen in public space it's already happened in our language it happens in our papers and so on it's always so much in our awareness we have us and the others and the Africans and so on and why shouldn't that happen you know and I will say like I would love it to be permanent like every hundred years it should come up in Oslo you know and I think yeah. it's important that you know like that 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 the, the that the the, the that the public space is also treated like our other troubled media. It means our mind, our civilization, because we have a huge problem in our Western civilization with the others, you know, like so. And that should also be expressed in, in the public space, you know. Well, and I think the Congo village is a fantastic example. Huh? Yeah. And I understand this with the thin line and so on. Yes, it's a thin line, you yeah. know. Huh? Yes. But it's important it's there, you know. Huh? Yeah. And not, not to provide, not as an example for, for this is the way the world should, should be, you know, like all this alternative. I mean, so uh, it's maybe it's a little like no future, you know, but yeah. still it's 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 uh, it's an utopia. Yeah? So, I mean, just just to give you just to illustrate like the, how 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 big is the problem uh, when we try to to look for the names of the 80 people who were shown in 1914, there was no records, uh, but but. But the police, like they just, they were just eighty Africans. Yeah. Huh? And uh, and today, if we wanted to do like a full reenactment, it's just impossible to get visa for eighty Senegalese people with this uh, with this world order and this global economy, you know. And uh, and yeah. uh, so, so so I don't know. I mean, like uh, just what we're doing here now also is is so surreal, you know. Like yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. yeah it's like the whole thing is just uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, but these things are. I mean, it, I think it's also like this. Uh, it, it's point to this uh, sort of uneasiness, of course, that then a certain kind of artist can easily use the whole world as his field of work uh, and extract value from that and using that in different contexts. And so yeah. <laughs> but if you tr- translate that to artists from <laughs> really a majority of sites around the world, they don't have that kind of access. That kind of artistic production is just impossible. I mean, as you're pointing out, yeah, absolutely, you know, it wouldn't work the other way around. It's, it's yeah. work, you know. Yeah, it's, it's almost the sin. Like, I came to this country like uh, to, like to, to Europe ten years ago as a refugee, and now you spend like 1.7 to build a, an art project. Yeah. That's just that's just <laughs> not right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's very right. Isn't it? <laughs> From where did you get the money, by the way? That yeah, guy. From that guy. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> he supported it when uh, actually, nobody else would get behind it. Actually, stuff, yeah, so. I have to say that uh, yeah. this guy pulled our application from the trash can yeah, yeah. and made it happen. Uh, he likes so projects thanks. that have been rejected. He requires that a project been rejected before <laughs> he accepts it. It's <laughs> a uh, prerequisite. Uh, Okay, after the question is done, okay. Well, we have one minute, is that it? Okay, five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so we have another question. I don't know how to translate things into... You're not very good at writing. You write statements, not questions. <laughs> okay. So maybe someone... Yeah. 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 Who, whom have the ability to, of deciphering an artwork in the public space? Uh, and now uh, this re remains as an excluding factor. And then you know how how this uh, coding of I guess how how is that right? Uh, like who, how do we you know how who has the capa capacity to decipher what is understood as uh, artwork? And is this something that excludes certain audiences then? So can we talk about the a general audience or a series of different audiences and so on. Mm. I mean, there was a question before that the, the, the jokes, the Turkish jokes, was, yeah. what, what were they? No, it's just uh, when I have been working with jokes, basically I went to, to some pizzeria, recorded uh, some jokes, uh, and then some Turkish friends of mine just, uh, uh, how do you say, um, uh, listen to them, and I just, I just had this: Is this funny or is this not funny? You know, so and then uh, uh, and then I decided to use them. And also with the Arabic jokes, I have pretty much used they are because they are written, so they are taken from a book, and they have been working together with that. It was with, Arabic or Turkish? Huh? It was Arabic or Turkish? Did they Arabic? I have to, two. I've read yes. some, something in Turkish and something. So 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 for me, it was it was just like an idea of of jokes, so to say, you know, so, uh, and then I make a recording and then I use that recording, you know, so. The referencing what we've seen a lot in the news about the uh, Arabic uh, graffiti in the last episode of Homeland, have you, do you actually know what it says? Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah but in the, in the jokes, I mean. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have, I have. I don't speak Arabic, so I have a translation of a joke here, yeah. so like so. And with the, and with the jokes, it was um, that the, the j jokes I have been publishing in Arabic has been in another way where they, they have all, all already been published in a publishing house in Cairo, so we took them from books, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but that's, I mean, um, uh, that has also been so sort of decision made on the go because, of course, since, since I, I need some, some, I mean, like some guidance out in a language that I don't speak, you know, so, so I, but I have, I mean, also uh, over, now you, I just showed like 10, 10 pieces or something like that, but I have made Several pieces with written Arabic jokes and one, and I actually somehow um, have reused the same three jokes over and over again because it's not about me providing jokes; it's just this whole idea, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I found some that I, especially, I found one which I'm very happy with, you know. So, uh, so, so then I just reuse the same joke again and again because it's not. I mean, it's not uh, about how to say. But uh, why you write jokes in Arabic if you don't speak Arabic and you can't enjoy the jokes? Oh, because. Uh, <laughs> Because it, it, it's just to, um, uh, to turn the power relation upside down, you know, like, so that suddenly you're standing... No, you use the power relation that you have. You have an access, so you can ask somebody to translate for you, and uh -huh. you can publish. Uh -huh. That somebody else that speaks Arabic maybe can't. Why, why change the power relation? Sorry. Because I think, I mean, I basically my work is about, uh, how to say, questioning the civilization I live within. Yeah? And I sp think it it's really comes to uh, show its weaknesses when it comes to uh, uh, to to exchange with the Muslim and Arabic communities around here. You know, so so maybe maybe it's it's, it's more how do you say it? Maybe the, uh, the the work is about where I come from. It's about here. You know, it's just like so the West. Eh? And it actually, and it, and it then showed like five years after when you had September 11 that it, maybe it, it was, there was something going on there, you know, just so. 
Yeah, I would, there, I but would it's but it's like it's, it's like if you would ask me, you know, like you are male, why do you use a female? I mean, like just like it's uh, yeah. So I was thinking on uh, something which happened a few years ago when Khaled Hurani was importing this Picasso painting to Ramallah, and uh, everything these complicated, interesting problems around it. I think that uh, beautiful art piece, really dealing with public space and the impossibility of public space. But then. Uh, I know that he was asked uh, or criticized by some other Palestinian artist for doing something so old-fashioned as to uh, make the Picasso painting coming to Ramallah. And then uh, Khaled said, yes, but why shouldn't Palestinians like and understand Picasso? Picasso is maybe the only artist that everybody has a relationship to. My mother, he said, has a relationship this to Picasso. <laughs> And why shouldn't we have that? I know that there are 11 Picassos in uh, uh, the Jerusalem Art Museum, but we will never get access to it. So he was making all these complicated rounds around this fact that uh, there is one single um, icon for uh, Western art, and that is Picasso. Yes, but I think what Khaled did, um, there is one thing, one step ahead. Mm. This Picasso was in Palestine. No other Picasso work was in Palestine before. Exactly. So whatever you will see this work, yeah. it's the work that was in Palestine. Yes. So this is Picasso in Palestine. It's not anymore pa uh, Picasso. Yes. yes. This is like that the is really power true. relation that yeah. he changed. Yeah, and of, course, and of course all the complications around how, who are you borrowing to? Is it a state, not a state? what kind of territory, the, the, the whole show, the whole way of staging the thing, uh, which where Khaled, I think, was using all these interesting, nuanced, complicated things, precisely because he was part of that community. And therefore, he was able to make a really super interesting, super effective public intervention in that very community, which everybody understood. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.